uh, if you ever find that your um, needle bar here doesn't um, go up and down when you turn the machine here um, it can be just a uh, little latch that's slightly seized um, and can be fixed quite easily um, but before you do uh, go delving into that make sure that you're not set to um, baste stitch so make sure the machine's not in the basting either of the basting stitches because the mechanism in, in question here is the actual one that causes the the problem the, the basting action um, so make sure you select you know standard stitching and if you if you're sewing along and you uh, everything else is working your um, take up levers spinning you know uh, going up and down your, your feed dogs are doing what they're supposed to do but the needles not uh, playing uh, playing ball just sitting at the top there not um, going up and down or well, more than likely uh, this is your problem okay so I'll start by uh, removing the cover off the back so we'll start by taking the back cover off here so we can get access into the area we need to there Now that cover won't come off without taking at least this here off, I think. Get to it. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and also. There's a screw here as well. It might be easy to take the end off as well, this panel here. It doesn't take much to get off. wheel can be quite hard to get off. <clears throat> it should just pull straight off. Okay, so I just heated this up slightly with a hair dryer just around this area. Not too much. I probably heated it for about a minute, I guess. Just got it warm and then it just popped off nice and easy. Uh, it's quite cold here today, so um, clamped on there. Um, there is a counterweight that comes out here. You don't have to take it out, but it, if it falls out, just make sure when you put it back together that the flat on on the uh, hole here on the counterweight matches up with the flat on the hand wheel there. Like so, just for if it does come out and when you're putting it back together. Another screw here, and there should be two. Two screws, one under here. Easily there. That's the end panel. And now this whole back cover should just lift easily out there.
Now, we also have to get this back panel here off, I think, to get easy access to the mechanism that's uh, playing up there. So, we've got to remove this screw and remove these connections here. Make sure the machine's unplugged too, by the way, before you do this. Live wires and whatnot down in here. Um, so it would pay to take a photograph of um, this area just so that you can see the connections for when you're putting it back together. So there's two there, one, two power, one to the motor, one from the plug, I think that is. These ones here, these are color coded, so you know, it, you, you don't actually need to take a photo. Um, these are color coded, you can only get them in one place, these ones. Uh, one screw here. got a little step on it that screw so just take note for uh, going through this heat sink here there might be another screw around here somewhere maybe this it's quite different to my 1230 I didn't have to take any of uh, any other screw out apart from this one here so uh, this, there we go. So that should, ah, before you hinge it back too far, um, there's a wire that is clipped in here that needs to come out, like so, and that will allow that to swing. there is I just pulled a, pulled this out a little bit to unhook it from these little hinges on the side there. So now we can get to this. Okay. First thing though is we need to get this bar off here. So uh, circle clip and a circlet there, so two circlets. Just remove those. Should just might have to give it a bit of a bit of a wiggle there to get it free from this shaft here. Maybe a bit of gentle persuasion there. Uh, there's a spring there too that hooks in behind in here. back up and we put it back together obviously. Now these screws here and it just 
comes off there, feed the cables through that hole there. And there we go, we've got access in. You can temporarily put the hand wheel back on so you can turn the machine over easily. Just set it on the end of the shaft there. So the area in question um, is on the right hand side of the machine here looking from the back with the covers removed here um, which is the left hand side near the needle bar if you're looking from the front of the machine so um, I'm just going to try and zoom it could be quite awkward to get a, um, a clear shot of this because it's sort of buried in, buried away uh, in the guts of the machine there but I'll do my best to get some light on it and zoom in and show you what's going on there So what you're looking for in here is uh, the needle bar which, let's see if I can let's point, to, point to it here with these. So this, uh, this bar here is the needle bar, okay. So if the little mechanism in question is disengaged and you turn the wheel, you won't see the needle bar move at all. You can see it's moving here because it's latched on. So I think just moving the machine around has latched it back into position. Uh, and you can tell it's latched in because you can see the uh, the little adjusting screw. The little adjusting screw here is actually attached uh, to the needle bar here. Okay, so you'll tell if it's latched in, you'll see that moving. And if it's not latched in, I'll just manually unlatch it here, if I can. If it's not latched, you'll see that little block with the adjusting screw I was showing you before is just stays at the top. And um, that's, that's the needle bar. Okay, so that's not latched, but if I bring the machine to its top uh, dead center position, it's latched in there now, and now it's dragging the needle bar as it should with with the machine. Uh, so this is actually working now. Um, I haven't done anything to it, but uh, I, I think it needs lubrication so to stop it from uh, disengaging permanently again. Uh, I'll see if I can show you the actual mechanism it's, well the actual latch anyway um, so if we move the spring out of the way okay there's the latch there this black latch you can see it moving there I'm just pulling that with the tweezers so if I pull that right back towards the rear of the machine and hold it there well now let's just see if I can turn the wheel a little bit to get it so you can see the um, little black sort of like a little thumb sticking up oh, it's hard to do with it just just there, that little lever there, in fact, that should spring back towards you when you pull it. It's hard, um, you might not be able to do this easily without taking the spring off, but um, just to show you anyway, that should always return back to its position there. And if it doesn't do so, um, if that's tight, it needs lubrication and um, if it doesn't return fully it will not latch the um, it won't latch the needle bar back and you can see the needle bars latched there because that's the little block with the little screw in it you can see moving up and down so needle bars latched so if that um, doesn't latch let's see if I can unlatch it
So I've unlatched it. I'm not turning the hand wheel. I'm just wiggling that needle bar up and down with my hand here. And um, so that's now. If the spring was on, it would sit up there like that. And um, and because if the little that little black thumb wasn't returning properly, it would never latch on and grab this needle bar here. And that that's why you've uh, you're seeing the needle bar not moving. So. It's a matter of getting um, lubrication onto the pivot point. There's this shaft here. Just at so the black thumb is up is up here, and the pivot point for it is down in here, and that's the part that needs lubricating. Okay, so if I just try and hold the light on that, and there's so there's the black thumb, and underneath it is its pivot point, and that's the part that seizes up. So that needs just uh, lubricating there. I would normally start with um, just a very small squirt of um, CRC or WD40, just to um, just to, just to free it up, and then um, I would go over top of that with a um, sewing machine oil, uh, something a little bit heavier for more permanent uh, or longer lasting lubrication. Okay, so um, I'll do that and put the machine back together. Okay, time for assembly. The uh, I've hooked the spring back up on there. If the if you do happen to knock the spring off it's not the easiest to get back on um, but yeah I'm trying to avoid knocking the spring off you can see the mechanism whether it's working or not without interfering with the spring so one end of the spring is on this little post uh, above sort of in behind the um, foot lifter cam there so you can see the top end of the spring there. I'll zoom out so you can get a bit of a perspective on where that is. And the other end latches on very close to, you saw it before. Um, so there's the, the little uh, uh, screw that I was referring to before. Grub screw. So it's just in front of that hooks onto it and there's a little slit in this um, casting here so that's the bottom end uh, I found it easiest to hook the top on first and then get the bottom end on so uh, once you get the knack of it it's actually not too bad but it can be a bit fiddly so you might have seen before when I took um, this panel here off that this spring here came off the uh, this is the foot lift bar so that actually um, the bar sits on there like so and this is actually in behind here in fact we don't really even need to take this circlip off um, probably leave that intact. So what I'll do is I'll put the circlip back on to hold this in place. And yeah, so this, this doesn't need to come off. Um, so, and on the back, the spring just hooks on to um, one end of the foot lifter there and the other end there yep. so you only need to take this um, that one there off when you're taking this back panel off so put that together feed these cables through so Put 
this. So I'm just feeding the um, that shaft through there. First of all, put this on. It's part of the foot lifter, and then I'm just going to go ahead and put these screws back in here. And don't forget the circle up here. Let's make sure that's right through there. that done. Okay, they're all tight. Okay, we'll put the power supply back on. So those cables down like that. And just clip these hinges back on like so. And then just hook the um, these cables back in, colour coded cables. Power down here. Now I've I've overridden the um, power micro switch with a piece of tape because I'm just going to test the machine without the back on. Uh, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Um, obviously, I've got the machine unplugged at the moment, but uh, yeah, you probably want to put the cover back on before you go testing it. This live circuitry here. Um, and if you do do this, just be very careful. Make sure there's no cats or kids around that could get into this area here. Uh, so that's all set to go. And we'll just. So now we should have working needle bar. That's the uh, basting stitches here, which is uh, where this little that little mechanism comes into play. So it'll disengage every uh, number of stitches. So choose this one here. Okay. Uh, figured out what the noise is. It's actually just this uh, solenoid here and the mechanism. You may be able to see it engaging and disengaging in the background there. So yeah, it's not anything um, sort of impeding the path of the uh, any mechanical item there, it's just that uh, solenoid. And there's another basting stitch here which is even a longer period between so it seems to be working fine there. 